All right. Well, hello. Welcome to our first geometry uh, tutorial or lesson. Um, we have here our first lesson, uh, homework 1.1, uh, which is understanding points, lines, and planes. And so what you're looking at right now, you should be able to see my face here in the corner, um, along with then uh, an app in which I will be completing the homework. And so you can see I'm going to set this up um, almost hopefully exactly like what your graph paper that you're completing the assignment like uh, should look like. Um, with slight variations, that's not a problem, but I'll point out how yours should look similar to mine to get you full credit and, and help you uh, do your very best on these assignments. So let's go ahead and begin. But first, let me familiarize yourself with what an assignment looks like. So what we'll cover first is whenever you have an assignment, at uh, the top, it'll clearly be labeled the sec chapter and section. We are in chapter one uh, and lesson one. So that's where this uh, 1.1 uh, comes from. Just switching codes. So that's where we got chapter one, and then we're on lesson one. And then this here is then the title of the lesson. You should always start your assignment with this, the title of the lesson, along with the, the chapter and lesson. Um, and then with each assignment, you will have for some, oop, let me click off that. You're going to see me make lots of mistakes as I learn to use this app better. Uh, you will have notes. And so every homework assignment starts with definitions. Every once in a while, one won't have any. And so we've got some definitions. We have here uh, point, line, plane, collinear points, coplanar. So we've got five definitions uh, that we're going to go, go through. And if you didn't see it, under the instructions for every assignment in Google Classroom, the, this all this information is there. It says the section that you're covering. It has the definitions you need. After the definitions come questions. Those questions, uh, you won't see them written here, but they are written there, and I'll be reading them as I work through them. Uh, there's one, two, three, and then four questions. Okay, so you have notes, which includes definitions and kind of questions setting up a particular lesson. And then you will finish with exercises. And this is where then you take that information that you've learned from the chapter and lesson um, and apply it over a series of problems. And so here you can see this is exercises are going to be page 9, uh, 13 through 27, 39 through 41 odd. And I'll say more about those once we get there. Um, but that'll be a separate video. I will not be working through the exercises in this video. I will just be covering the notes section, which is the definitions and then the questions. Uh, there'll be a separate video in which I cover some of, I won't do every single problem of exercises with you, but I will select a couple, three or four that I think are um, either difficult or good examples of things that I don't mind working with you. And so you'll have that as a resource as well to help you through the exercises. Okay. Uh, and then the only other component to this assignment, once you finish the notes, once you finish the exercises, then there will be a quizzes quiz online um, with about, you know, anywhere from five to seven questions or so um, that you complete through quizzes um, to earn credit for completing this homework assignment. And there'll be questions very similar to what you did in the definitions uh, and exercises. Okay. Might sound like a lot of information right now, but uh, you'll figure it out once we do it a few times. And so I uh, usually won't have that long preamble. We'll just jump right into the lesson uh, once we begin. And so let's 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 do that. Homework 1.1 points, uh, lines, and planes. And so we're just learning some of the tools of geometry in chapter one. And so there's a lot of vocab that in geometry it's very important to know what you're talking about. And so there's lots of different terms, and you want to make sure you're precise in how you use those terms, or else you might take a question that's actually fairly simple to answer correctly and make a mistake because you didn't have your vocabulary precise. So definitions are important. Um, and so let's jump right into those. So uh, definitions, first thing we have is a point. Some of this I've already written in. So you'll want to include, you'll want to write that, the, the notes here. Show me that this is the notes section of your assignment. Note that you're beginning your definitions. And then let's go ahead and begin our first definition. These are just coming right from the textbook. Um, and I've kind of put them in my own words. Um, I would encourage you to kind of put it in your own words, keep them brief and short, um, but also accurate. So a point, what is a point? A point is a location. Um, it's just a, you point to something because you're trying to indicate a certain location. Uh, points have absolute, have no size, um, and they are usually represented just simply with a dot. So if you're trying to have a point, it would look something like, whoop, let me get my pen out. Uh, this would be point P. Okay, as simple as that, just with a dot, and then it's usually named by a letter. So you could have point P, you might have point A, you know, or you might have point G. Okay, so really basic. 
it has no size to represent a dot. That just means a certain location. And we'll be doing that constantly throughout geometry in order to indicate various locations um, uh, of different shapes and images that we're working with. Okay, so then how about a line? What is a line? A line is a straight path. Uh, it has no thickness. Um, so when we draw it, we just imagine there's no thickness to it, but it's indicating a path that extends forever. So in other words, a line doesn't have an, a beginning or an end. And so um, let me just say, so if you have a line, you could simply draw it like this. And you always put the arrows. I'm going to keep working on being neat in this program. Be neat on your assignments. A little tricky. Uh, it has a, it goes in left and right and extends uh, forever in either direction. Okay, you could have obviously a line that does this in any sort of direction. We usually don't have to say straight line because those are uh, you're saying the same thing twice. A line when you say the word line, you're implying that it is straight. Um, so that's so anyway, straight path. Uh, in terms of how we would name a line. Uh, sometimes you'll have, just simply have a line and it will have a letter like this. That's a cursive L. They always do that so it doesn't look like a, uh, a one. So this could be right here, could be line L. Or another way that a line might be named is they might put a, a, a po two points on it. And so if I put these points and I call this point A and point B, notice that's our first term, points, which are just dots and locations. The name of this second one could be line, notice how I notate this, A, B. They're almost always capitals. Um, and then they have that little uh, dr line drawn on the top of them. And so that is line A, B. Uh, so you could name a line in either way with either uh, a single letter representing the entire line or by naming certain points on the line. Uh, and just in case you're wondering, line A, B is the same as if I were to then say, well, how about line BA? Well, that's the exact same line, because obviously they're talking about the same line there that's going diagonally upward. Uh, let me pause and mention something about uh, definitions. Notice I not only am writing out a definition for these terms, I'm also drawing a picture. Every definition that you do this year in geometry has to have some sort of illustration, some sort of visual that um, gives an example, basically, of what the definition is. So if you are writing definitions and all you put is the, the, you know, the generic definition out of the book, you won't be getting full credit when I check your assignments. You need to have uh, some sort of illustration or example included with each one of your definitions. Okay, so point, a location, line, a straight path, and then we have this thing called a plane. Notice not spelled like an airplane, uh, but what we refer to as a flat surface. Um, I always say to think of it as a sheet of paper. A sheet of paper, although it technically has thickness, kind of is a way of representing a plane. Um, a plane is a flat surface. It has no thickness. And also the way that a, a sheet of paper is inaccurate is that it um, extends forever. So while a sheet of paper might have edges, and even when they draw them in your book, you'll see them with edges, um, a plane is implied that it extends all the way off infinitely in four directions. Another thing to note about a plane is that um, it requires three points to create a plane okay uh, we'll co cover this in one of the questions but let's just let me go ahead and scroll up if i have a little more room to draw here so a plane is often drawn something like this representing again kind of like a sheet of paper and this too could be named a couple different ways uh, it could be named sometimes they'll just put one letter here and we call that plane s um, or they could put a number of points on it. So like say this had point X, Y, and Z on it. Uh, you could call this plane S, or you could call it plane X, Y, Z. Either way would be fine. Plane S or plane X, Y, Z. Okay, and so you're talking about that flat surface. And again, although I drew some edges here, it's implied that it does extend infinitely in all directions. Okay, there's uh, we won't go into that too much detail. Okay, so you have uh, points, lines, and planes. Next definition, two more, is collinear points. Collinear points. Collinear, co means to share. And linear means line. 
So when you hear the word collinear, that just means that you have points that are on the same line. They share a common line. So this is really, again, once you see what things mean, you're like, oh, that's pretty simple. But if we have a line here, notice it's extending in either direction infinitely. Uh, if I put point here, and we'll just say, how about point S and point T, we could say that point S and T are collinear because they're on the same line. If I were to introduce a second line like this, and let's go ahead and put V, point V on there, that's where you would see, you know, if you were asked, very simple questions, but uh, if S and V are collinear, you'd say no, because they don't lie on the same line. Um, and so you can, so collinear points on the same line, and you could add as many points. If I added another point here and said that's point W, all, all three, S, W, and T are collinear. Okay. Uh, also, just while we're looking at collinear points, uh, I'll point out that there's lots of ways you can use those points then to name that line. So this line right here, I'm going to switch colors because I'm going to indicate something. But this line right here could be named a number of different ways. I could name it for any of these points. I could call it point, uh, I could call it, I'm sorry, line ST because that's this line. I could call it line WT because it's the same line. I could call it line TW. Um, so when you have a lot of collinear points, you also have a lot of options for naming even you know one line. It could have lots of different names, but you're still talking about that exact same line. We're not talking about line V. Okay, TMI, Mr. Mafford, TMI, too much information. Okay, what, last definition, collinear points. Or I'm sorry, coplanar points. So notice the word change here, planar. That comes back from our, our term plane. So instead of points being on the same line, this refers to points on the same plane. So again, we draw our nice little plane. I'll just reverse directions just for fun. Okay. So if I have points here, and we're going to be doing a lot of alphabet stuff, so I'm always picking letters A, B, and C. You could say that points A, B, and C are coplanar because they all lie along the same plane. Um, they share the same plane. And so you'll do exercises where they'll have you pick, pick that out, and they'll draw something. A lot of times they'll draw something that looks like this, where they draw one plane that's implied that it's hor uh, horizontal, and then they'll draw another plane that is indicated to be vertical, and they'll put points here and here where you'll see, oh, it's very clear uh, that those that those um that those points are not coplanar. They're on different planes. One's on a flat plane or a horizontal plane. The other one's more on a, a vertical plane. Another way to think of this is like if you picture the walls in your house, you know, something that's on the plane of the floor would be coplanar with anything else that's on the floor. Um, but anything that's on the wall would not be coplanar because you've got one plane here and one plane here. Even planes like your floor and your ceiling would not be coplanar because although they might be parallel, we'll learn that term too, uh, they are on different surfaces. Think of a plane almost as like a surface. Okay, let's keep moving then to our question. So that's our definitions. We defined each term, um, and then we gave examples of each term. And again, be as neat as possible. I'm still learning this app, and so it's a little, little ugly at times. Um, but um, please be as neat as possible as you do work through any of your assignments. Okay, so now we have questions. And again, these are under the instructions of the assignment. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and read them here. Uh, the first one says, how many dimensions does each have? A point, a line, or a plane? Okay, so in terms of dimensions, length, width, height, maybe even time, uh, which of these, what's the difference between them? Well, a point, uh, a point has basically zero dimensions. Because if you remember, a point takes up no space. So you might be tempted to think, oh, a point has maybe one dimension or any, no, it takes up no space. It's simply a location. So a point inhabits no dimensions. It doesn't have length. It doesn't have width. It doesn't have height. A line, however, so we've got a line here that extends. Does that have length? Yeah, you could measure the length of a line. Does it have also width? No, because that's, it only has length. In other words, it has no thickness. It has a distance maybe this way, but it doesn't have any thickness to it. So we would say a line has one dimension, okay? Uh, and then you get to a plane, which again is like a sheet of paper. And now you can see that you have both length going this way and you have width going this way. So now you have how many dimensions? Two, 
So a plane has two dimensions. Um, you might think three dimensions, but again, imagine that this tiny thickness doesn't really exist. And so you really have length and width. Whereas again, maybe a pencil, imperfect, but if that was a line, you only have the length. So dimensions wise, zero for a point, one for a line, two for a plane. Once we get into cubes, then all of a sudden now you've got three dimensions. Or maybe if you start moving cubes throughout time, then you can actually get to four dimensions. Okay, question number two. How many lines can connect two points? Okay, so what this is referring to is if I were to have two points, let's just have a point here, and let's do a point right here. Let's call this M and call this N. So I have two points. How many lines can I draw that are different from each other between points M and N? Well, I could connect them with one line. For sure, that's line, and we get we could write that as line M N. Okay, remember how that's written. Line M N. Okay, can I draw a second line that still connects the two points but is distinct from line M N? No. So this is just one of those conceptual things about lines and points is that only one line can connect. Um, lines, I'm sorry, can connect two points. Uh, there's no way I can get a second line between M and N that is distinct. You could say, well, maybe if I do this, well, no, that doesn't work because that's not a line. It's not straight. Okay. That's something different. So there's no way I can get another straight line between those two points. Uh, okay. Question number three, how must two lines intersect? And then later, how must, how must two planes intersect? So let's take a look at that. So if I have one line, and I need to intersect with another line, what do we call where they're intersecting there? What would we call that? It's one of our vocab. That is a point. In other words, they cross each other at exactly one location. And so that one location we've learned is a point. So two lines always cross at a, I'll go to red because I'm giving all my answers in red, point. Okay, so lines always cross at a point. Let's look at planes. And again, I'll draw this to my best, the best of my ability. But imagine two sheets of paper, or actually the best way to think of this is think of your two walls, your floor and your one of your walls where they intersect. So here, here's my, I'll even draw it that way. So here's the floor, and now here's my wall. How are they intersecting here? Not in just a single point like the two lines, but you can see where they intersect, it actually forms a ah, line. So two planes, when they intersect, they form a line. Okay, just trying to use these questions are just trying to build up our conceptual strength and kind of the details of working with the, the different vocab. Okay, and that takes us to then question four, our last one. Okay, uh, yep, last one. And that is, what is the difference between a line, segment, and a ray? Because all I had you define was a line, which I said was, a, path, a straight path infinitely extending in either direction. And it could go like this, could be this, could be going like this. Okay. Uh, so we know what a line is. We've got that. And I'll start with just a drawing before we see if we want to write anything. So a line extends if infinitely in either direction. A segment is a type of line that has only, or that has endpoints. So in other words, if I take that and I draw it like this, Except now it has a dis it actually has a beginning and an end. Okay, so maybe God is a line, no no beginning, no end. I have a at least a, a earthly life. I have a beginning and an end. So this is a line that would be a segment, and you get it. Maybe you guessed a ray is a mix. It has a starting point, but then in one direction it extends infinitely in another in the uh, in another direction. So just kind of, again, building up the vocab, because you might look at those and think, oh, they're all the same. No, for our purposes, you want to know the difference. Okay, a line extends infinitely in either direction. So uh, infinite in both directions. A segment, you would say, is finite. in both directions. You could also write, it has a beginning and an end point. And a ray 
has is infinite in one direction. So, or you could also just say it has a, uh, well, we'll just say infinite. And again, sorry, my writing's not the best. Infinite in one direction. Okay. And also, last thing I'll point out, and we'll let you go, and I'll just change colors here to make it stand out. But you would also note them differently. So say, say um, I wanted, I put some points on this one, and you can have points uh, on here. Oops, let me change the color. And let's just call this point A, point B. And you could still have point A and a B on all three of these. That's not a problem. But how you talked about each one would depend on whether you're saying it's a ray, a line, or a segment. So like a line, uh, almost out of space here. But let's say a line, it would be written as A, B, and then just as we already learned with a double arrow on top. That means I'm talking about line A, B. If I'm talking about segment A, B, then I, do, I would simply draw a line like that. That terminates. There's no arrows on the end. That segment A, B. And then if I was talking about ray, you just do the opposite, or the you know the next bit then is a ray, A, B. And we'd say A is the end point of that ray. And then even though B, you know, we're talking about the ray, so the way I draw it. So notice the little, the little hat you give the letters tells you or denotes which one you're saying. Am I talking about a line, a ray, or a segment? Okay, well... That takes us to the end of this. So now what you would do after completing this, and you, what you have to do can look just pretty much identical to what I just did. So for every homework note section, you're going to have me walking you through it step by step. And if I went too slow or I was boring or you wanted to skip ahead or you wanted to go back, that's why you have this video. Um, I'll be doing that. But now that you're done, you would want to go ahead and write down on your assignment your exercises to practice these concepts. And um, you'll do that on your own. I will make a separate video where I'll work through a couple, but um, this video is long enough, so I'm going to end it here. And if you want to watch that video to walk you through a couple of a sampling of the exercise problems, uh, then you'll see that attached to uh, today's assignment as well. All right. Good job.